Hey guys, just want to talk to you about the painting I'm working on today. Uh, it is a Morgan from the Morgan Motor Company. It's a British automobile company. Um, this actually happens to be my Uncle Charlie's uh, car. He bought it uh, in the 60s and wanted me to do a painting of it. So it's coming out pretty good. Uh, I like to use a transparent red oxide to get my basic drawing in. So if you try to paint a car, uh, I like to do without any pencils. I use my transparent red oxide as my uh, drawing, if you will. This allows me to smooth things out and to erase. Uh, I would recommend that you try this. This is gonna be a lot easier than trying to use a pencil and eraser. Uh, as you can see, for me, it allows me to work faster. Here's where I lay in my darks and kind of get a little bit more of definition with the car. It, uh, it's working pretty good. There's the brayer. So here's where I use uh, the brayer to kind of smudge things, lay in a little bit of a green tone, which I, I found very easy to work with. Also kind of gives it a little bit more excitement. Uh, and as you'll see near the end, that's also where I'll use the brayer again. Now I'm putting in some dark greens here. One of the things that I find with a car in painting a car is, is that you can't be married to anything, that if you see a mistake, you see something that needs to be altered, you know, allow for time to alternate, alter it, not alternate, but alter it, you know, make those changes. Uh, for someone who's a car collector or a car owner, they're going to know every line of that car. So you want to make sure you get it right. So take the time. I find when I do these commissions, I, it always takes more time than it would be if I were to do it for myself. Uh, this was the same. Uh, it took me twice as long, but you know, you put a lot of care and love into these paintings. You want to make sure that the person getting this painting absolutely loves it. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, it was still challenging, <laughs> you know, a lot of curves, a lot of lines, and you got to make sure they all end up in the right places. Uh, one of the challenges I had, I found was, is the right, uh, the right, uh, headlight that was a little bit too high. I had to lower it down a little bit and the grill was tough. Uh, you'll see here later on, uh, I'll have to rework that grill and the tire, uh, the left front tire. I also had to rework a little bit uh, as you'll see later on, but taking the time to get your perspective, right? is always going to help you. Uh, but be flexible. If you know that something is not right, you know, be fearless, erase it, wipe it, paint over it, do whatever you have to do to get it right and take your time to, to make sure that all the lines fit up because nothing, uh, when you're doing a boat or a car or a train or something like that, you know, for someone who's an ardent fan of those subjects, uh, there's nothing that I think that really kind of gets their goat when, uh, they see a broken train or a broken car. It just doesn't look like uh, the boat would float if it was a real boat. So just make sure that you, you take the time to get the anatomy of the structure correct. And so here I found that uh, getting, there's that resizing of the car uh, wheel on the left front wheel. I had to rework on that a little bit. I'm working the spokes. Spokes were really fun. I, I mean, it's not too often you see a car with spoked wheels, and this was, was really cool. And so I wanted to give that uh, impression, but you'll see that I'll go and rework that a little bit again because I didn't get it quite right. Now, one of the things that I, I love about painting uh, directly is, is the fact that um, it really, uh, how would you say, it's a sense of accomplishment when you can just lay paint down and get a car or get a person uh, rather than having to work in with a pencil and everything like that. Like I said, if you have the chance, try try working on your underpainting. It'll make you more confident as a painter. I know it has worked wonders for me and it's definitely built my confidence. And I hope that this one will, uh, that uh, I won't say this one, but I hope that when you try that slowly it'll build your confidence too. Now, one of the things that in this part here is the headlights, is that the headlights is everything. It is the character of the car. It is what really gives that statement of what kind of car it is. And I think that anybody who's a fan of a particular car, if those headlights aren't perfect, you know, they, they're they going to notice. Uh, the reflection on the car, There's, I tell you, uh, this car had so many curves and lines and the reflections were just really fantastic to paint. 
it was a lot of fun uh, and very challenging. I, I have to tell you that uh, the grill, as you'll see later on, up oh, there's I'm working on the spokes, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun there. And that real wheel, uh, you know, I'll build something in and then I'll destroy it later. Uh, and it's it's there's the brayer, so I'm laying in a little bit more of a toned background here. I didn't want to give uh, the original background was the tree in a driveway. I wanted to kind of give this a sense of, even though there's nobody behind the wheel, that this car is moving. So as you can see, I destroyed part of the rear of the car to kind of give it some distance. And that's one of the things I love about using a brayer is that to be able to paint something in, destroy it, and then rebuild it in a little bit. As you can see there, the rear wheel and the headlights. It can be a little scary though when you're doing a brayer because you just don't know how how much you're going to take away and how much you'll have to repaint but that's part of being fearless when you paint so here's that grill i tried to use a rigger brush and to no avail it just did not work for me so i ended up using a flat where i felt like i had better control over as you can see here I'm slowly working in the lines and then i add the highlights to kind of redefine the spacing on here as you'll so you try to get, and this was really tough. This grill is really amazing. It's a, it's a grill that has a curve near the top. So I found that as I was reworking, that was a lot of fun to do. And, and yeah, looking as says the front wheel looks pretty good. I can't remember if I reworked that. Yeah. And uh, just adding some details now, putting all that. I mean, this, this thing had so many little cool ornaments and, that little chrome line down the center of the hood was really awesome. And I really, at this point, still wasn't sure what to do with the background. Uh, sometimes I have an idea, sometimes I play around. This one, I kind of just wanted to uh, give a sense of, of motion and, and speed uh, without really defining too much. I want the car to be the showpiece, not a background. And so, uh, at this point, this is where I start to use my smaller brushes, my uh, palette knives a lot of times, small uh, flats as well, and like a number one brush or a zero brush. And so one of the things that uh, I found also was is that the there were details that I didn't notice, like the door handles. I don't know why, but there's so many other details in here, I didn't notice it till the end. And... <clears throat> as I was adding little things in, I was like, wow, uh, this thing has a lot of ornaments on it. And it was just really was surprising. So when I destroyed parts of it, I think that those little ornaments, things kind of help pop it forward, especially for someone who has or appreciates this kind of car. So I'm really trying to work on the background a little bit, trying to give it some variation uh, in strokes. Oh, and there we go and there's my signature so I must be right about done and so I'll show you the finished piece here in, in a color corrected photo there we go yeah I was really happy with that my uncle was really happy with that and I had a lot of fun thanks again for joining me if you'd like to uh, follow me just go to my channel subscribe uh, follow me on Instagram as well or go to my website liquidmethod.com to see more of my work thanks again and I'll see you soon later